Hi everybody, this is Tyler Cupper for Base14.com, bringing you character animation in Adobe Flash Part 3, frame by frame animation using onion skinning. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be animating this character from my upcoming movie once again, named Monster. He's going to be looking up, uh, doing a little uh, a skyward look here, and uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move his body frame by frame. So. Um, in order to get started here, what I'm going to want to do is move around my panels a little bit. I'm going to want to move my properties panel up here and my timeline over here to the side so that I have uh, much more room to, uh, to work around properly here. So, now that I've got everything in place, the other thing that I want to make sure that I'm doing is uh, I want to note that I make the background color a dark gray so I can see everything a bit better. And then I'm also going to turn off uh, all the snapping uh, that comes turned on automatically. Uh, because that's really getting our, getting to get in our way when we're moving things around in, in minute amounts. So, as usual, uh, we, we want to start off with some key pos key positions. So, um, make a column uh, for his uh, first key position, and then I'm going to make a col column for his second key position. And for his second key position, all I want really is his head to tilt up, but I need a guide in order to figure out how exactly that should look. So, I'm going to copy his entire body here, and make a new layer to uh, to make a guide on. And I'm going to call this layer guide naturally, and I'm going to actually turn it into a guide, which gives it a different logo, and uh, and also makes it so it won't appear in our final uh, timeline when we play back. So I'm going to paste all that stuff in place that I had, turn off everything else, and then convert this into a symbol just called monster guide. Now that this is a guide, or now that this is a symbol, that is, I can uh, give it a tint. Uh, similar to the background color and then set that at about 70% and what that'll do is that'll uh, make it so that uh, it makes easier to look at without getting my way and then I'm going to rotate it based on his neck position uh, just a little bit and uh, and then that'll give me an idea of how his head would turn if it was turning about his neck. So now I'm ready to start uh, start making my secondary key position based on this once we give it a lock here so it won't get in our way. Let's turn on the hair, the uh, the ears, the eyes and the mouth. So now what we can do is we can grab this stuff and uh, this is what we can get away with tweening because we don't have to animate this frame by frame it's not really changing shape like the body is going to change shape. So these parts I'm just going to move like we did in previous tutorials and uh, and find a good position here based on my guide and then I can go ahead and tween them. The important thing here is that we use motion tweening where we can get away with it and we use frame by frame where we have to uh, have to put in the long hours to get it done and what that does is it gives us the best combination of uh, speed and uh, accuracy so it's it's combining different techniques in order to get the best solution so now that I've given these a little bit of easing his uh, mouth is ready to go and uh, I can start working on his body. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these off and turn on his body and set the body to wireframe. So this way, now that it's in wireframe, I can uh, I can more accurately uh, animate it frame by frame using the onion skinning. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this wireframe color to something you guys can see a bit better. Maybe a nice bright orange. So now uh, I can see it against the background really well. So we want to come over here to our final keyframe and uh, and start making it match our guide. So I'm going to grab these different points and start moving them around based on my my guide position because what I'm doing is I'm representing how his head would look up if the bottom half of his body uh, stayed the same stayed the same way. So I could do this on a uh, on a tablet, for example, if I just wanted to custom draw each of these positions, and that would be totally fine. Um, it would give you a slightly different look because it would uh, it would not have quite the uh, mathematical uh, accurate curves that doing it with the pen tool does. So it's really just depending on uh, the style that you want. So now I've created this, so his body stays the way it already was, it's left that way, and then I've just rearranged his head so it matches my final position. So if I turn off my guide, now what I have is the first frame and the second one, so you can see how he's moving his head. So we need to make our, our in-betweens. But you might say, hey Tyler, 
why can't I just do a, uh, a shape tween? And you certainly could if you gave it a shot, but sometimes shape tweens give you very strange results, as you can see here. Sometimes they do work, sometimes they don't. But for this situation, obviously, we're not going to have much luck. So you might always give that a shot to see what results you can get. But since shape tween's not going to work for us, we're going to have to do it frame by frame. So let's turn on the onion skinning. I've made uh, three empty keyframes here where I'm going to do my drawing. And I've made sure that my uh, onion skin is expanded to my first key position and my last key position. So uh, now what I can do here is I can find my middle position. And I'm actually literally going to make it a, a pure lit middle position. And uh, so I need to copy my first frame over to my middle thing, so I actually have something to work with. And then I'm going to start moving these points around. Um, it's, uh, it's all up to you whether how perfectly you want to make these middle positions. But, uh, but for the purposes of this, in order to keep it simple, we're going to make uh, this middle position fall right directly in the center. Later on, uh, if you want to uh, change the timing and get different feels, you can change exactly whether the middle position uh, falls in the middle or if it uh, favors one side or the other. What we're going to do once we've got this middle position done is that we're going to uh, create the uh, the first position and the second position so that they favor the first frame and the last frame. So right now it's a linear sort of motion. But we're going to emulate our easing abilities by taking the first frame now and making the second frame favor the first frame. So now I've copied it over and I've got, I'm have got i working in the, uh, in the second frame. And I'm just going to use these points and just nudge them a little bit. So I'm no longer uh, making a keyframe that is uh, directly in between the other two frames it was around. Now I'm favoring the frame that it came from. So it's just so ever so slightly uh, coming from its last frame. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second to last frame. I'm going to take the last frame. I'm going to duplicate it over to the last frame. And then I'm going to take all these points and have them favor the last frame. And so what this is like is this, it's like the motion is, uh, is easing into the last frame. So what we're doing is we're creating our own custom ease job. So now when I turn off my onion skin and I step back and, and take a look at it here, it's got a nice uh, physical flow and it, it slows in and it slows out. So when I turn on the rest of my body parts and uh, turn this back on a solid mode, I can actually watch the motion in place. Now there's a little bit of problems here on his mouth that I can clean up, but uh, other than that, what we've uh, what we've accomplished here is a, a halfway decent custom frame by frame animation job. And so at certain times, you're really just going to have to find that that's the best policy is, is doing it frame by frame to really get exactly what you want. You can't you can't tween all the time is what I've found. Now uh, to spice this up a little bit more, the one last thing I'd like to do is is add a little bit of follow through here with his eyes, like we've got it in the final version, where uh, they just keep going up a little bit more in order to show him that he, he's actually looking up a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and move those a bit and, uh, and then give him a little bit slower, slower bit of an ease out. And so now we've, uh, we've got a monster that looks up with his eyes. Well, that's just about all the time we have for this tutorial, but I hope it's been insightful on how to do frame-by-frame -frame animation. And uh, until next time, I'm Tyler Kupfer for Base14. Thanks for watching.